The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, came to a very shockingly safe and abrupt end in Episode 6, which might be the series finale. So let's take a look at everything you might have missed. VD here, and in this video, we are going to be talking about the series finale of The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, what it could mean for The Walking Dead universe as a whole, all of the details you might have missed in this episode, and my personal thoughts on the episode at the end of this video with a 10 score. So subscribe to the comicbook.com channel on YouTube for more videos like this one, hit that thumbs up button, and let's get started. Started. Rick and Michonne have their plan to get Jadis' dossier and leave for Alexandria, protecting the ones they love by keeping them a secret. And this is complete with Rick convincing everyone at the CRM that he survived not one, but two helicopters and was the only one to do so. In his explanation, he claims Michonne, aka Dana, to the CRM as far as they're concerned, saved his life and died. Beale wants to drop the Echelon briefing on Rick Grimes, which seems to be something that requires a lot of trust and hope put into the soldier on the receiving end of this information. Weirdly enough, he seems to not really trust Rick because he demands that anything that could be a weapon is slid across the table to Beale so that Rick can't be a threat, but kind of also allows him to be a threat by dumping all of his villainous information and plans on him. In the conversation, Rick remembers some of the horrible things he's done to survive, like killing Shane in Season 2, the cannibals at Terminus from Season 5, and biting Joe's throat out to save Carl and Michonne. Meanwhile, Michonne is raiding Jadis' room, where there are loads of paintings, including portraits of people like Gabriel and Beale on the walls. The dossier ends up being inside of a metal cat. This is a callback to when Jadis used to make these things in the trash heaps when she was beefing with Michonne, suggesting she lay with Rick after. That was quite a moment in the fandom. And it's also a callback to when Michonne got a metal cat for Carl way back many, many seasons ago in The Walking Dead. Michonne gets caught when a CRM soldier tries to slide some papers into the door, and well, that person isn't going to be in The Ones Who Live Season 2 if there is one. And on her way out of this building, she sees a rabbit on the ground, and this is reminiscent of the rabbit that Gracie has been carrying around in Alexandria after they saved her from the Saviors. And this seems to be like the trigger that indicates to her, well, there are kids and things to fight for, so we need to do something about this. Beale reveals that Pittsburgh and Philadelphia had a massive war many years ago, and Beale sacrificed the city of Pittsburgh by letting a giant walker herd take down the city and getting his men out before they got there. Ultimately, the CRM scientists have found that all humans will go extinct within 14 years, and we see the test subjects first shown in the credit scene from The Walking Dead The World Beyond spinoff. Ricky Dicky Doodah Grimes is not down with destroying Portland or other communities for the survival of the CRM, and we see a flashback to when Beale sensed Rick was lying about Okafor from much earlier in this series. Beale senses Rick is about to kill him, stands up and yells, No! But Rick has a knife, while Beale has a sword, and, well, uh, that math is enough to say that Rick is going to kill him. In this sequence, there were also quick flashbacks to characters from Alexandria, but only characters who are still alive at the time Rick left and still alive now, like Maggie, Negan, Daryl, and Carol, along with Rick Grimes in the moment where he was captured by the CRM helicopter in a scene that played in the credit scene of the Walking Dead series finale. Beale dies by the same sword used by Hugh Mercer in the Revolutionary War, the one he found in the Battle of Fittler Square when the world started to fall apart, and this does end up with him having his hand across his chest when Rick kills him, as if to say he pledged his allegiance to the wrong side and ideals with the CRM. Elsewhere, Michonne is getting a very similar briefing that Rick is getting except in a theater full of people, and when the images on the screen of kids that the CRM plans to kidnap includes one that looks like RJ, Michonne has reached the end of her rope and decides it's time to take down the CRM now. Rick and Michonne reunite and they have a conversation where Rick reveals that Beale saw him as a leader in the CRM. I personally think that the expression on Rick's face kind of indicates he sort of liked the idea of being a leader in the CRM. Not that he wanted to be like Beale, but that he thought he could be a good person as a leader. And that takes me back to the credit scene Easter egg from the first episode that I pointed out in the video where there was a singular figure and I thought that that's what Rick would want to ascend to. Rick and Michonne's plan to blow the whole place up looks like it'll include them when Thorne cuts them off, but Boom goes the dynamite and boom goes the thorn. Well, oh wait, never mind. No, she survived the explosion. She's like apparently the only person who wasn't covered in water in a blanket to be able to survive it. Still, Thorne ends up getting stabbed by that same sword that killed Beale, and she decides now that she wants to help Rick and Michonne and hand her gas mask over to Rick, who didn't need it at all up until this point, and wears it for the next, like, 30 seconds, and takes it off. Ultimately, Rick and Michonne end up on top of a container, and the overhead shot that we see this from is very reminiscent of the end of The Walking Dead's pilot when Rick was trapped in the tank. A news broadcaster voiceover shows that suddenly the CRM has entirely changed its ways and will now abandon its villainous plans. It'll help outsiders that they may encounter and allow citizens to come and go freely. So first stop, Judith and RJ, and this is probably near the Commonwealth in Ohio rather than near the Alexandria safe zone, seeing as the last time we saw these kids in The Walking Dead, it was in a field outside of the new community much farther north than Alexandria. 
I will say, Judith turning her head and looking at Rick not only felt like, wow, it has been a while since The Walking Dead came to an end as an audience member, because Kaylee Fleming just celebrated her 17th birthday and is much older than the last time we saw her on this show, but also puts in perspective how long Rick has been gone. The last time Rick Grimes was on The Walking Dead, Judith was played by an entirely different actress because she was that young, and that was before the six-year time jump and then the multiple years time jump that we learned in this show. RJ calls Rick the brave man because of the stories he heard, and Rick accepts the title after denying the title earlier in the series, showing that he has finally come back to his true form rather than abandoning it for the CRM, and they all live happily ever after, for now at least. I did ask Denai Guerrera if The Ones Who Live would get a season two, and she said she couldn't tell me that, like she's just not allowed to, not in like a we don't know yet, just can't say. She also told me the last thing they filmed was the sequence on top of the shipping container. There are so many more insights from that interview available right now on comicbook.com slash The Walking Dead, where the full transcript is available, and there's lots of cool insights from Denai, who was a wonderful interview to talk about The Ones Who Live. Now let's review the series finale or season finale, we're not really sure yet, of The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. On a scale of one to a CRM helicopter, this really flew way too fast and safely for my liking. After episode five, I was left wondering how could they possibly wrap all of this up, and I thought for sure there was going to be a season two and the stakes of protecting Alexandria and this whole CRM big bad was really gonna be a looming thing in the Walking Dead universe in a very exciting way, because the first five episodes of the series I thought were all tremendous. And while I did like quite a few elements about this finale, I did think it really flew through some of the most interesting story points, and Terry Quinn ended up being a very underused actor as Beale. I thought Beale was a tremendously interesting character and his role at the CRM was going to be this really cool, expansive, threatening thing that Rick and Michonne were going to struggle to overcome, but I thought that it happened really, really easily in the end. Now that said, I am really happy that Rick and Michonne both survived this show. I thought that the moment with Rick reuniting with Judith and meeting RJ for the first time was beautiful, and these four being a family is a nice note to end it all on. It feels like almost another series finale. I'd argue that the season 8 episode where Rick said goodbye to Carl and told him he was going to rebuild the world for him, it could have been the end of the show there, and there's been several other points along the way that The Walking Dead as a whole could have come to an end. So by that logic, it really felt like with all of the flashbacks and all the stories we revisited with Rick and shown in this episode, it was like, well, we might never do this again, so let's give this a real good swan song that the fans and the actors and everyone can really feel true closure from. The thing is, while I did want closure, I did feel like it came a little bit too fast in this episode. There were quite a few things I really liked about this episode too, though, like the tension in the Beale and Rick scene, the tension in the elevator scene, which honestly would have been better if it didn't cut away to Michonne in the middle of it and just kept us present, kept us feeling claustrophobic, like Rick is about to find out what's going to happen next and if every single beat of that elevator buzzing with each floor it was reaching emphasized the time passing, but instead it was moving really quickly and had to cut away to Michonne and had to come back to the elevator and it kind of broke the tension a little bit. I do have to shout out the musical score in this episode, which I thought was tremendous. I thought that the music really did a good job of setting the tone and setting the scene for so many sequences in this finale. And if this is indeed the end of the road for our time with Rick and Michonne, then I'm glad we got the closure that we got here. Even though I would have loved to see a season two and see this all expand into like just a big Avengers Infinity War Avengers Endgame type of event for the Walking Dead universe where all of the characters and all of these spinoffs and the CRM is basically the Thanos of it all connecting all those characters that are still out there in multiple parts of the world in the Walking Dead universe. I think that would have been really nice. Instead, we got a conclusion here where the CRM has changed its ways and presumably will start rebuilding the world, even though it's the Walking Dead universe, so I'm sure there will be other plans. Anyway, now I'm rambling, I'll just say this. I give this episode a 7 out of 10, and I think The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live as a whole, was better than this finale. So I give the show an 8 out of 10. I liked it a lot more up until this, but ultimately I ended up just feeling like, okay, that was fine. I loved episodes 1 through 5, and I really liked a lot of the elements in episode 6, but again, I just feel like it moved too quickly, and I really wanted some time to feel the stakes, to feel the threats to Alexandria, to feel like Rick and Michonne were really having to figure their way out, and ultimately it happened really quickly and kind of easily. And a lot of the stuff kind of made me suspend my disbelief, because Rick not wearing the gas mask, or Thorn not being affected by the explosion, just a lot of these things didn't really make sense. Not to mention, two people were killed by knives and swords while armed with a gun. So, some weird choices, but ultimately, it worked overall more than it didn't. 
Now, let's talk about Season 2 and whether or not there will be a Season 2 of The Ones Who Live. It seems like there might not be. There's been no official announcements at the time I was recording this video anyway, and the Nigerira wasn't willing to disclose whether or not that's in the plans. So, I think that The Walking Dead universe might see Rick and Michonne pop back up again at some point. I think it's inevitable that we're going to see Daryl and Rick meet again, Maggie and Negan come back into the mix with everybody, but how and when and where that happens, I have no idea. And I'm really hopeful that a lot of the plans Scott Gimple has to tie this up, like things like the PPP card and these other Easter eggs and storylines and threads that are still left hanging, end up coming to fruition and telling a really satisfying conclusion to the universe as a whole. But when, where, how that happens again, really hard to say. What did you think of The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live? Share your thoughts in the comments section and subscribe to the comicbook.com channel on YouTube for more videos like this one, exclusive interviews, and so much more. I'm BD, I'll see you there.